abandoned coal mines. They could be turned into heating and cooling hubs for communities thanks to new federal funding. Diana Olick explains in her continuing series on the rising risks from climate change. Underneath an unremarkable warehouse in northeastern England lies an abandoned coal mine. It is a relic of energy's dirty past, but a potential gold mine for its clean future by providing geothermal energy for homes and buildings. Abandoned coal mines um, can be full of water, especially when uh, the, the mining has ceased. So that water will contain heat. Here's how it works. Abandoned coal mines fill up with water. By drilling boreholes way down below, that water can be brought to the surface with pumps and then passed through heat exchanges and heat pumps in buildings and homes. The first ever neighborhood mine water heating scheme in Great Britain just went into full operation at the end of March and will eventually serve over 1,200 homes. Hopefully most of these schemes, if not all of them, will be able to operate at a similar or better cost to the traditional fossil fuel heating schemes we have at the moment. Geothermal heating is not new, but taking it from abandoned coal mines has yet to take off, especially in the U.S. Even in the dead of winter in Pennsylvania, it's still warm in a coal mine. Yes, it's going to stay at a consistent temperature year round, despite what's happening outside. Natalie Cruz Daniels, with her students at Ohio University, is studying abandoned mines in Appalachian, Ohio, to see which ones are close enough to towns to be used for home heating. Coal fields run under at least 20 states in the U.S., and here in Ohio, there are more than 4,000 abandoned coal mines just like this one. In other words, a wealth of opportunity for geothermal energy. Back in 2007, the U.S. Department of Energy reported that the amount of water currently being discharged from underground coal mines in just the Pittsburgh coal seam could potentially be used to heat and cool roughly 20,000 homes. So why aren't we doing that? Cruz Daniels says that while it's a relatively inexpensive form of clean energy, the location and legacy may be liabilities. I think some of it's out of sight, out of mind, right? When we look at investment in new technology and investment in clean energy in Appalachia, it's limited. Coal is controversial, so investors don't target the coal regions, which she says is a mistake. In a less predictable climate and in a warmer world, this opens up an opportunity for turning this legacy, this liability, into a resource. Geothermal energy from coal mines can not only be used to heat homes and buildings, but also to cool them. And here's another potential, data centers. They're some of the worst carbon offenders, but researchers in Scotland are now studying how hot air from data centers can be pumped into coal mines and then recovered from the water to heat other buildings. Back to you guys. So, so Diana, I, 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 I'm trying to understand the, the, the fuller story with this. If it is geothermal and it's mines for coal that are the key for this, does it limit the kind of building, residential, and businesses? Does it limit the geographies to just those coal mine areas in, say, places like the U.K. or Appalachia? Yeah, I mean, you have to be near the coal mine. That's what they're researching in Appalachia, and that's why they put that development around the coal mines there, that they put the entire system in. You have to be close to a coal mine, but there are so many across the U.S. and around the world that there's likely to be a lot of neighborhoods nearby. All right. Diana Olick with the latest there. Thank you very much.